Okay, it's time to talk about the cholinergic agents. So we have um, anti-nicotinic agents, muscarinic agents, anti-muscarinic agents, and cholinesterase inhibitors. Um, but we're not going to talk about the anti-nicotinic agents. We're going to start off with the muscarinic agonists. For example, pilocarpine or bethanicol. And then uh, the anti-muscarinic agents, atropine or benztropine or ipratropium. But we're focusing on atropine. Then the cholinesterase inhibitors such as neostigmine. And we'll talk about tacrin. So let's get going by starting with a discussion of the muscarinic and nicotinic receptors. What are those M's and N's? So first of all, M1 receptor. Um, so first of all, mechanism of activation. This is PLC activated increased IP3, which leads to uh, uh, DAG. Uh, excuse me, and DAG, which in leads to increased intracellular calcium. And the location is in the CNS, the brain and the sympathetic ganglia. And the action is CNS stimulation, working on acetylcholine. So again, that M1 is for the brain, CNS stimulation working on acetylcholine. M2, MOA, AC inhibited, decreased Cyclic AMP also increase in um, potassium conductance. So these M2 receptors are located in the heart, and they decrease heart rate and contractility, and again, work the substrate is acetylcholine. Then we have M3, PLC activated, which leads to increased IP3, which leads to DAG increased uh, intracellular calcium. So this location is the smooth muscle tract of the GI which increases gut peristalsis and exocrine secretions and also the smooth muscle of the GU tract which increases bladder contraction and relaxes bladder sphincter which again is working on acetylcholine. Now as for the nicotinic receptors the nicotinic receptors the MOA is the activation of the sodium potassium channel at the neuromuscular junction so NM neuromuscular this promotes muscle contraction um, and then this is working on nicotine these are on nicotine substrates so the nicotine um, if you remember the picture of uh, the pre, uh, preganglionic and postganglionic nerves, you can understand this picture. Then there is NN, these are, uh, this is the MOA here is activation of the sodium potassium channels again, and this is autonomic ganglia and CNS working on the vasodilation of renal blood vessels. So that's nicotine, and then of course this, the adrenal medulla which stimulates epinephrine release. So if you remember that picture of the pre and post ganglionic neurons, you should be okay here. So NN and NM. Okay, the first agent we're going to talk about is pilocarpine. So MOA, pilocarpine is a muscarinic M1, M2, M3 receptor agonist, which acts mostly at the M3 receptor. And pilocarpine causes contraction of the sphincter muscle of the iris, contracting the ciliary muscle. So clinical uses for both narrow and wide-angle glaucoma. Next, let's talk about bethanicol. Bethanicol is a muscarinic M2 and M3 agonist. By stimulating M3 receptor, this drug causes increased bladder contraction along with relaxation of the bladder sphincter, thereby promoting urination. M3 receptor stimulus can also result in increased gut motility, used to treat bladder atony in the postpartum or postoperative period. Side effects, diarrhea, mainly.
Atropine. Atropine is a competitive muscarinic M1, M2, M3 receptor agonist. So it can, um, by blocking M2 receptors, this can cause tachycardia and mild vasodilation at high doses. By blocking the M3 receptors, atropine causes decreased GI tract motility, urinary retention, and cycloplegia with uh, mydriasis. Use for it as an antidote for cholinesterase inhibitor poisoning, for example, uh, from nerve gas in insecticide. Used for the treatment of bradycardia in during cardiac emergencies. Side effects, hyperthermia. Other, atropine poisoning is treated with cholinesterase inhibitors, e.g. physostigmine. Uh, Sc scolapine is a derivative of atropine that acts as a muscarinic antagonist as well, particularly at the M1 receptors in the CNS. It is used to prevent motion sickness.